Hey everyone, it's Ryzen, and welcome back to Let's Play Summoner. Well, I'm going to uh, record the bonus episode here. I'll technically just title this episode 5, but yeah, I'm going to go through all these scenes. They're not too long, I think, so we'll go through the uh, Arenagoth first. Sure. We got four little scenes to watch, so we'll start at the beginning. I won't talk over the uh, voice acting. This is the tale of the Arenegeth, the war of the gods. The children of Guval usurped their father, the maker of all things, and Urath proclaimed himself lord of all creation. But Urath's sister, Nahara, envied her brother's power and sought the throne of heaven for herself. Nahara and her disciples rebelled, and the gods made war against each other. Thus we know this battle as the first Arenegeth. Urath crushed Nahara's rebellion and banished his sister to Kosos, our world, where our ancestors lived and died. Yeah, nothing too long. We'll do the, uh, the second one now. Among the people of Kosos, Nahara brought chaos and discord. The skies, seas, and plains roiled with war and bloodshed. By Nahara's hand, the children of creation turned against each other. Urath heard the lament from Kosos, and he came down from the heavens. For a hundred years, the second Arenegeth raged, until Nahara surrendered. Urath exiled his sister to a prison deep below the earth, a world of fire we would come to know as the Kingdom of the Dead. Go for the third one now. But Lahara would not concede defeat. She sent forth her minions to steal the souls of the dead and hoard them in the halls of her prison. Thus, deep below the world upon which we stand, our souls shall be doomed to endure all eternity. With a vengeful fury, Urath swooped down from his throne and struck the earth with his sword. The very stones that hold our world together split apart. This is how one kingdom became many. Medeva, Orenia, and the islands beyond the far horizon. And so began the third Orenegeth, the final battle of the gods. Go for the last one here. These are shorter than I remember them. Defeated once again, Nahara begged for mercy, and Urath relented. But then, as she embraced her brother, Nahara plunged a dagger in his back. Her minions fell upon him and tore the flesh from his bones. As Urath died, the winged Sudani fell from the sky, their god destroyed. The cities of glass shattered and became the Vahiomo, the Sea of Stars. This is how our people lost their wings at the dawning of the chaos of ten thousand years. I think we got one more scene here. Oh no, we've got uh, a few more things here. I might actually start the sewers in this episode. The story of creation begins with Guval, the maker of all things. From the tree of seven branches, Guval carved the spheres of creation, Urgal and Kosas. Urgal is the city of light and joy that lies beyond the Vaheomo. The Sea of Stars, where Anadi keeps watch. These are the white spires of heaven, beyond the fires that vanquish night and winter. 
Kosos is the world, and here we have lived since the firstborn. The sea and the mountains, the fish and the birds, and all people of all kingdoms belong to Kosos. In Kosos we live, and in Kosos we shall die. Guval, the maker of all things, created his children. Amisido, god of the sea, Lahara, goddess of the flame, Vadagar, god of the earth, and Urath, god of the sky. From the white stones of his city, Guval cast down his children. Never shall you cross the gates of heaven, said the maker of all things. Here I am Lord, and I shall rule so all creation knows my tyranny. Kosos shall be your kingdom and your prison. Keep going with uh, the city of the gods. The children of Guval gathered at the center of the world, and there built the city named Iliose. For all would know this place as the city of gods. Orath said unto them, Here we shall make a people to serve and worship us. This very temple was built upon the city of Iliose. For Manel means city of gods in the tongue of the old Runari. In the forge of the gods, the children of Guval created the four tribes of the world. The Kosani of Vadagar, the winged Sudani of Urath, the Munari of Amisido, and the horrors infernal Odoni. We are the descendants of the Sudani, though we lost our wings in the Arenageth. Go on to the next one. The Banishment of Guval. Stone by stone, the children of Guval built the Tower of Ina to reach beyond the Vaheomo, where Angadi keeps watch. Up the winding stair, they march to Urgal, the shining city of light and joy. The walls of heaven fell. From the white spires of Urgal, Urath banished his father, the maker of all things. Cursing his children, Guval set the celestial sphere in motion. As the seasons turned, death came to Kosos, and the children of the four gods grew old and died. All right. Got one more here, and yeah, I'm only about 10 minutes in, so I'll go ahead and start the sewers. The windows of our temple also tell the story of Doom Diona, daughter of Amasido. Vadagar, god of the earth, fell in love with Iona, enraptured by the beauty of her song. Vadagar raised Iona's palace above the waves, but as a fish cannot live out of water, Iona perished in her mother's arms. Amasido grieved for his daughter and swore vengeance. With a great wave, he struck the earth and flooded the cities of the Kosani, children of Vodagar. Those who survived the deluge fled to Sanavar, a mountain of the wise, where they await the return of their god. All right. Well, I think that's all of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's all of them. Double check those. Okay. And I don't think if I say Hierophant again, anything else will happen. No. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, load my file here, and I will meet you back at the sewers. Okay. I'm here at the sewers. Uh... I thought about going over the equipment setup, but really, you can uh, just look at the video description to see what I have on. Uh, you could equip the Fiery Falcon. I believe it's a little stronger than uh, the Short Sword. Actually, it's a little weaker, but uh, no, don't do that. Damn it, I didn't want to equip it. Go back to the Short Sword. Uh, it's Fire Elemental, so I guess technically it would be a little better here. 
but uh, the problem is, is that it will randomly cast Fireball, on top of being slower than the Short Sword. And Fireball is a spell that puts flames around the target. Well, if I'm standing there hacking away at an enemy, I don't want to be damaging myself with fire. Yeah, the Fiery Falcon has got to be one of the dumbest weapons in the game. Whatever, let's draw our, uh... Our, uh, weapon. Let's go straight here. Oh, I didn't need to draw my weapons yet. Of course, it should be level 8, so uh, make sure you have your characters developed up to level 8, like I recommended. Uh, for the way to spend your points there. And uh, I want to try and get Joseph to finish off all of his chain attacks. If he does not, I will farm them at the end of this area. I think it's pretty reasonable to finish off his chain attacks or get really damn close. Now, we want to, uh... <laughs> no kidding, please. Uh, see this fork here? Remember this fork for later. There's a little gate down there. I will be returning here off screen. I will also start editing out battles where I get ambushed. Now these are broken brass golems. As soon as I kill this guy, I'll go over his uh, stats there. I don't want to screw up my chain attacks. There we go. Now the broken brass golems, they're the easiest enemies here. They are strong against fire and ice. Oh, yeah, I guess the Fiery Falcon would be pretty bad against a lot of the enemies here, then. Uh, it is vulnerable to blunt attacks. That's uh, weak versus energy attacks. Uh, I don't have any way of really dealing with that right now. Uh, energy is basically lightning in the game. But, uh, yeah, I don't have a way of dealing with that right now. The Baby Besites, uh, they're the only Besite enemy that does not drop a tail. Uh, they are strong versus pierce attacks and vulnerable versus slashing attacks. Yeah, I mean, it's at this point in the game where already piercing attacks are not that great. But I don't have any really good slashing or blunt options right now. I mean, I could use a quarter staff, and Joseph could equip that. The problem is, is that it's two-handed, and I couldn't use a shield. And uh, that would be sacrificing ten defense. And that's just... Not a good idea. So, I don't recommend it. Um, do you see all the monsters around here? I'm gonna go kill this guy here. So yeah, pretty much just use this area to work on chain attacks. If you need to heal, use, uh... Heal. If I start taking damage, I'll cast Regenerate on, uh... Fleece, and if I encounter a group of, say, two or three enemies, like, you see there's a lot of dudes right there, so I'm going to go ahead and cast Protect to make it a little easier for me to deal with them, and I'm going to go ahead and use Regenerate on Joseph, uh, because Joseph has slightly less physical defense at this point. And uh, I might edit out this fight, I'm not sure. Depends on if they all ambush me. I hate it when your character automatically moves like that. Now, I got hit with slow there. The reason why I got hit with slow is because the character was moving. So the game interprets that as you trying to run away. Uh, effectively, in order to prevent you from running away easily, uh, every single enemy in the game will inflict slow on you if you are trying or if you are moving when trying to kill the enemy. I don't like that mechanic, but well, it is a mechanic in the game that you have to be aware of. Yeah, I didn't get ambushed there, so that's good. Now, the sewers are big. Uh, there's a lot to do here. And we have a lot of quests that we can uh, work on while we're here. It would help if I could uh, get my chain attacks going here. Now, I do have a slight chain attack penalty because my speed is only 95%, but that's so close to 100 that I think that's pretty reasonable. Shoot. There we go. Okay. So I think that's the way I want to go. 
Yeah. Um, I do want to go up that way, but before I do that, there's some enemies down here that I want to take care of. Uh, this area is pretty dark. Uh, if that's a problem, let me know, and I'll try and turn up the brightness, I guess, for future areas like this. But it is supposed to be dark. Who knows? Maybe I'll try and brighten it a little bit in uh, editing. Eh, I'm getting ambushed, so I'm going to edit these guys out. How was that, uh, editing out like that? Instead of leaving in every single fight when I get ambushed by multiple enemies, I figure just edit them out. There's nothing down there. I just felt like going down there. I don't know why. And I don't think there's anything up here either. At least right now there isn't. I think maybe later there'll be an item there. I forget. Okay, so we got a four-way fork up here. And what the hell is that? I guess the people of Linnell have a lot of waste, huh? Jeez. I mean, like, where is that going? What What is going on here? Whatever game. So we got a uh, a brown basite right there. That guy, he's well, he has no weakness or resistance. Uh, I'm gonna have to add whether these guys are weak or strong against physical attacks, but it doesn't really matter right now. Uh, each enemy sort of has either low physical or low magical defense in the game, typically, or like you know, high defense is the both, or low defense is the both. But uh, I didn't write that down for these guys, evidently. I must have only started doing that later. For some weird reason. But, uh... Yeah, Brombosites aren't too hard. Besites in general are pretty easy enemies. Nothing really interesting about them, other than the green Besites that can poison you. But I don't think there are any green Besites here. Or there's also a, ma um, a magic type Besite. Make sure you grab the tails from the Besites. Uh, now, I do want to go down here first, even though it's a dead end, because I would like to kill this brown Besite here. And there's another Besite behind the fence that, if I could... Could you stop running? Yeah, sometimes that happens where the pathing for the enemies gets really weird. And sometimes your character will also path at like a 90 degree angle to fight the enemy, and I don't know why. It's just a weird quirk with the pathing system. And sometimes your character will just randomly stop attacking when you're trying to do chain attacks. Now, technically I should be having Joseph tank if I'm having him use the... Oh, I got a ring of health. I'm going to go ahead and equip that. Uh, if you get one, awesome. I mean, equip it on uh, probably Joseph because he's got less defense right now. Yeah, it gives you plus 30 HP. It's pretty good. It's one of the better early game accessories. But uh, I'm not going to go ahead and list any rare drop or common drop that I don't intend to farm for. But I will be using them if I happen to get them. And I recommend you do the same. Now, I can kill this guy if I get close enough. I think. Uh, I thought I could. No, I guess I need to, uh... Have a spell to do that, and unfortunately, I don't. If I was level 9, I might be able to have an offensive spell, but... Oh, well. Oh. Oh. Is another chest, or am I just imagining things? I'm imagining things. Great. So at this four-way fork, we want to go to the west first. Oh, there are green besides here. Right. Of course there are. I'm going to go ahead and take care of it. Can I sneak up on this guy? Yeah, I hit R1 to go into solo mode there. Let me see if I can get a good backstab off on this guy. Nope, I couldn't do it. Enemies can sort of hear you when you approach them. There is an ability that will let you uh, sort of eliminate the sound you, your footsteps make. I am. But I don't have that ability yet. Okay, so I just reached level 9. So I have some points that I want to use to develop now. And uh, I want to put... I think three points into fire? Yes. So I want to level up my fire skill to level four. 
And that will give me a few abilities here. As for Fleece, at level 9, I want to put two points into Picklock. And I think two points into... Oh no, five points into uh, Appraise. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Actually, it's four points. I had a typo there. I'll have to fix that on the uh, video that I put her skill ch uh, chart on. But yeah, I want to get Appraise up to level nine, pick luck up to level seven. And I believe that is all you need because we're going to be able to increase those to ten with items later on in the game or uh, equipment. So pretty good there. Now we can actually work on her combat abilities. Now, the reason why I wanted the work to work on fire, uh, that's the only offensive magic that Joseph gets. And fire is what I would consider the best offensive magic tree in the game or skill set in the game. It has three or two really good attack spells in it. Uh, fire arrow and meteor storm. Now, Fire Arrow is your bre bread and butter uh, fire spell. It's a uh, single targeting fire spell. Not that strong, but it gets the job done. It's pretty powerful, pretty fast. It's cheap, it's effective, it's efficient. It's really good. Deals fire damage. Fireball is basically... Well, I will show you. Let's go ahead and use Fireball on this green beside here. This is why I don't like Fireball. It's uh, a little bit more expensive than Fire Arrow. But now he's taking a little bit of DOT there. You see that seven? But if I stand in it and start attacking this guy... Okay. Yeah, see? I just took some damage there. Unfortunately, the AI will cast Fireball. So there's not really a way to get around that. You can only have one Fireball fire effect active at any given time. Which is why I can't cast it more than once. Uh, Meteor Storm deals fire damage to random targets. It's a multi-hitting spell. The only offensive multi-hitting spell in the game. It's awesome. I love it. And it's relatively cheap as well. It's only, I think, 6 AP. Fire Arrow is 4 AP, by the way. Now, there are two other spells in the fire category that I won't be getting. At level 7, you get Wall of Fire. Essentially, it puts a Wall of Fire on the ground that you, you target the ground. And let's talk to this guy. The Rooms of Wheels and Levers. Oh, so we have to talk to these golems to open gates, huh? Yeah, a bit of a puzzle. What are you seeking? See where the tunnels lead. Yeah, so these are the other entrances, but we had to go in this way first. But yeah, Wall of Fire... It's a DOT, essentially, on the ground. Anything that's in it, whether it's friend or foe, takes damage. It is an abusive spell, because the enemy doesn't realize that you're targeting it. So yeah, you can pick off enemies from a distance with no consequence. I am banning it, so I will not be learning it. On top of which, it's not useful if I'm not going to take advantage of that anyway. Uh, Inferno is useless. It is ridiculously expensive. I think it costs like 20 AP, and it's an AoE fire spell. That's basically as strong as Fire Arrow, but all around you. It is not worth the AP cost, and it is just not very good in general. I don't recommend it at all. So, I'm not going to put any more points into Fire. Now, if I were to say get Fire up to level 5, it wouldn't do anything, by the way. Increasing points in a spell category only gets you access to more spells. It does not make your spells more powerful. In fact, your spells really don't get much more powerful from what they are at the beginning. Really. I think they scale a little bit with your level, but that's about it. But they're really good. Magic is good in the game. Anyway, those green besites... If I can find them here. They're, uh... They're annoying because they can poison you. Yeah, they can poison a single character with their physical attack. And they are actually weak to, or actually vulnerable to, pierce attacks. They're not weak to pierce attacks, but they do take more damage to pierce attacks. They have a vulnerability to them. So, not bad. So at least our pierce attacks are useful against some enemies here. Now, we want to open gate A1. 
Now, if we open gate A1, B1 will close. They're both closed right now, but we can only have one open at a time. Yes, uh, essentially we need to use... Yeah, see, that's this, these gates over here. We need to have one character go on ahead. But we don't want to do that quite yet. But we do want to open gate A2. And we're going to open gate... I think this is A3. Yes. Those gates you can just open with no consequence. Now that we've opened those gates, we can head to the other direction. Uh, let's do a little bit of healing. I think I'll also edit out when I want to do like a lot of healing. I think that'll be uh, a bit better for us there and like I said I'll go to about half an hour in each video and that'll be it probably really 20 to 30 minutes will be the range that I stick with for the every other day uploads I like that the best for me since I don't have to edit a video every single day it just makes it easier for me so we could go that way but not yet let's go head to the east here Let's draw our weapon. Let's at least loot this uh, side here. We've got uh, a few uh, baby besides over there, so let's put protect up. Make it a little bit easier here. Once I get all the spells I care about in a specific spell category, I will go over the remaining spells that I do not intend to get. Yeah, Wall of Fire is really good, but you have to take advantage of what is frankly an exploit in order to get any real use out of it. There's an Ice equivalent of that spell later on as well that I will also not be using. You could maintain Protect on your party if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. By the way, your MP, or your AP in the game, it will regenerate over time. So, don't worry about that. In fact, the higher your max AP, the faster it regenerates. Uh, I want to finish looting over here, because I'm going to be meeting you back at that first fork I told you to meet me back at on the next episode. Figured I'd edit those two out. They decided to fight me at once. One of these... Yeah, see that one I can turn. This one, I cannot. But there is a... I thought there was a chest around here somewhere. Was there a chest? No. No, you just have to turn the wheel. So, now I want to meet you back at the first fork there. That I told you to remember. And I will start the next episode there. So, I'm going to end this one here. So, yeah, this is Ryzen. Thanks for watching. Take care.